I started by asking Roy what he got out of music and what he actually got out of conducting a band. But it's not so much what you put in, it's what, what's already there and how well you can draw it out. Now, this, this, this uh, highlights the difference between the experienced bands and the less experienced bands. I do find that with younger bands particularly, with lower section bands, as a conductor you, you more or less have to put everything in before you can draw it out and then you hope that you're drawing as much of it out as possible. With an experienced band, with a band such as Stanshaw, there's a great deal of musical expertise and experience already there. And um, it's a matter of getting the uh, nth degree of that out of the players and perhaps supplementing it with a, a, some of your own thoughts uh, on interpretation, methods of attack and balance and so on. The Sunrise Band this year are the British Open champions. Tell me, when conducting that at Manchester and, and winning that shield, what did that mean to you? This has meant a great deal, both to me and, uh, and to the band. I mean, to have brought, um, to have brought the title to a, a region in the country which hadn't previously uh, picked up this title, that in itself is, is a, great, uh, a great feat, a great feeling both for the band and for myself. Uh, I think to win any title is a great morale booster for a band and um, Sunlight have been very close on a number of occasions and I feel we're getting a little bit despondent, we're perhaps thinking that they were never going to break through this so-called uh, this door of northern domination. Suddenly they broke through it and uh, the, um, the effect on the morale and the confidence in the band is really quite special. And what is the effect of the players up north? How do they look on a Sun Life band because they've won? Well, I say this in all sincerity. I think there's a, I think there's a great deal of warmth and a great deal of respect for this band. Uh, I mean, it's known, it's not throughout the band world, it's a band of, this is the gentleman's band, you know, and uh, people respect this, and anybody who's ever come in contact with this band, either in mass bands concerts or visiting conductors, everyone takes away the highest regard. And um, whilst they all say, well, I'd rather it have been me, but if it hadn't have been me, I wouldn't have liked it to be anyone else better than Sun Life. The piece of music that the band played was called Loire Dis by Lalo. Can you describe that to us, paint a picture of what the music is trying to say, and then we can hear it. Yes, well, it's an overture to an opera, and I think the best thing I can do is tell you roughly the outline of the opera, and then you, you, you could pick out elements from that story and see how they relate to the music in the overture. Is, that's spelled Y-S. This is a mythical city, legendary city, which was reputedly was below sea level, and therefore it had particular problems. It had a king, and the king had a daughter, and she was rather treacherous. And um, I won't go into all the details of the intrigue, but ultimately she betrayed her father and all the citizens of the city and got a soldier boyfriend to open the sluice gates and the water came gushing in and drowned many of the citizens until eventually she realized what she'd done and the only way she could appease the waters was by diving in and sacrificing her own life. So that roughly is the background to the, uh, to the opera. The, over the overture itself takes some of the themes from the opera. There's a wonderful uh, flugelhorn solo, which is one of the soprano arias, and um, the magnificent euphonium solo that comes into the overture, which, which I think has made the, the overture so very famous. Uh, it's played on the cello in the orchestra, and this also is one of the arias from the opera.